Hey guys, Squiggles here, and I'm bringing you a game on Taldirim Altar. This one is going to feature Liquid Huck and Lenok Foyu, and I am super excited to see these guys play. And I know <laughs> I actually say that every single time that I uh, I cast a game, but the truth is, I try to find games that I really want to watch. And so Liquid Huck, one of my favorite players of all time, one of the best um, foreign players actually in the scene right now, and he is living in Korea versus Lenok Foyu who is a scary good Zerg player, like really, really scary. And the Foyus really just kind of appeared out of nowhere a couple of seasons ago on GSL and started just just owning face, and nobody really knew who they were. And they were like, who, who are these Foyu guys? And and we don't really think they're going to be all that good. And then they just started winning everything, and everybody's like, holy crap, we've got to be careful of these guys. They are really good. You can see already, Lenok, what is this? This is a... Ah, looks like that's a six pool. So Lee not going to put on a little six pooling action, and oh, how unfortunate for him. It looks like Huck is actually going to scout it right away, and Lee Nock not really going to be very happy about that because his pool is going to finish about the time this probe gets here, and it looks like Huck is going to see it and be like, oh... You would. Lenok, you would. So let's see what he is going to do in response to this. We can see if we look at the production tab. He is oh, he is going to keep making probes. Interesting choice. But a lot of times you'll see p players just cut probes entirely in order to get this wall. And this is a really, really wide area for... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just really wide. So I don't know. And here come the Zerglings. I don't know. I think... Uh, this is, oh, man, I don't even know. But Huck is, is determined to get his expansion up. That's why he's putting his wall here. And you can see it looks like the Lings are just passing the Zelnaga here. On their way, Huck has put up one cannon. He has a gateway on the way too, and a pylon is going to make. This is the most ramshackled, like, defense of the Alamo gate or uh, wall ever. But it may actually work. You can see, oh, wow, Lenox able to get all six... All six lings attacking this gateway, and this is, could be really bad. This probe is going to hold down like a boss, and maybe he can possibly... Uh, he's going to make a gate. Can he make another wall? He has enough for... Uh, oh, no, and it's not tight. How is that not tight? Oh, my, it, they actually overlapped. I don't, huh, interesting. Okay, well, it looks like Lenok is in the base. He managed to get three Zerglings in the base of Huck. And you can see that uh, Lenok is actually ahead on supply, 16 over 14. But if we look at the income tab, we can see that there are 13 harvesters for Huck, 12 for Lenok. So Lenok is sacrificing a ton of economy to to do this pressure. Good little uh, micro by Huck. Looks like he did lose one pro probe, but managing to severely damage a couple of these Zerglings as my, my mouse just goes crazy and throws my screen all over the place. But Lenok, not disappointing, wanted to just get in a crazy aggressive game, and he is definitely doing that. And it's going to be interesting to see how he decides to pull out of this. You can see he's now taking two gas at the same time and going back to droning, so not going to build any more Zerglings for the time being. Very, very interesting, because, yeah, he can't bust through this wall again. So what is his follow-up going to be? It seems like he is going to be harassing this for quite a while, going back to the income tab. Looks like Huck is ahead by just a couple of harvesters right now, now getting a few more. And he has started his nexus. So Huck is really committed. He's like, you know what? I don't even care that you have lings in my base still. My probes with their tasers will be able to do quite good. Oh, you can see these Zerglings are super low on health. So Huck doing a great job of defending this. And now it's just up to him to how is he going to go ahead and pull out of this. I'm not really sure. He does have a wall. Looks like he's going to be getting his cybernetics core by the wall now. And the reason he do does that, obviously, is because he has no pylons anywhere else. So kind of have to build it there. These Zerglings who are doing their little shenanigans. They actually are regening health. So uh, if they don't get hit for a long time, they will go back up to decent amounts of health. Meanwhile, Lenok going to be doing the good old scout stuff. And oh my goodness, he's getting a lair on one base. And Huck, it looks like, has a zealot just chilling over here. Wants to say hello. He's going to run right by this queen and start targeting down drones. How many is he going to get? He has one kill. Can he get a second? No. Nice little micro by Lenok to go ahead and deny that second kill. So one kill. And if we go to the army tab. No, that's the wrong one. Let's go over here. Yeah. We can see that Lenok has killed four units and three of them are workers. So... A little bit ahead as far as that goes, but as far, if we go to the army tab, we can see that workers, Huck is ahead, and army supply, Lenox ahead, but those are all Zerglings, and 
Where are those Zerglings? There they are. Wow, that's a lot of Zerglings. So this Zealot, although Zealots are really good against Zerglings, they're not as good when the Zerglings get a complete surround like so. And that Zealot is going to go back to Ire and report on things from his deathbed, apparently. But Huck is getting a good, inf good information and knowing exactly what's going on. He's going to be adding on a couple more gateways. And he does have two Nexus now against only one base of Lenox. So, oh, the Taser takes him out. Oh, my goodness. If only Tasers could kill in real life. But they can't. At least not that I'm aware of. Somebody's probably going to be like, they can't, Quiggles. But I don't. That would be a terrible way to go. Oh, my goodness. The more I think about that, the worse it is. Nidus Worm coming in for Lenox. And is it going to go up? It does not look like it. Man, it was so close to going up, too. And down it goes. And that's actually really big because Nidus Worms cost a ton of money. Let's go and I'm not 100% sure. Let's go ahead and check. I apologize for not knowing this right off the bat. Yeah, 150 and 200. And then when you actually make the worm, it's like another 100, 100. Yeah. So that's a lot of money Lenok has. Holy crap, that's a nice limbo line. That's a lot of money that Lenok went ahead and uh, spent on the Nidus Worm, and then it's not even really going to be able to be used. Look at Huck's positioning on all of his all of his pylons. Now that he knows it's there, he has literally scouts everywhere so that he will not even a stalker there being covered by those trees. He's a sneaky stalker. He is stalking like you should. Every stalker should take notes from this guy. Can't even see him. Wow, it's very good, very camouflage -y. And look at this. We have Banelings and lots of Speedlings. So it looks like Lenox is now going to try a bust. And you can see on the supply, Lenox is actually quite a bit behind. And he is doing nothing but making Zerglings. 16 more Zerglings on the way. Here comes the Banelings, and they are going to get uh, Force Fielded instantly. And they're going to come in and do, oh wow, actually quite a bit of damage, taking out the huge wall and doing some damage to that cannon as well. So here come out the probes. They have their tasers set to kill, not stun. They are set to kill. And it looks like these. <laughs> these few speedlings are going to go ahead and run in here and try to take out this pylon because it was the best uh, target of opportunity. I don't even know. But actually what he's doing is he's making all of Huck's units pull back. And you can see now if you look at the front of Huck's base, a whole bunch of speedlings are going to be running in. Oh, a couple of force fields going off, but they're not going to be able to save those sentries. And now there are a whole bunch of tasing action going over all over the place. There's massive, massive damage being done to both both players right now. You can see Harvester's Huck is really, really far ahead. Like He keeps on losing guys, but he just keeps making more and more. It's 34 over 17 right now. And supply-wise, it's 53 supply versus 29 supply of Lenok. So I actually think Huck is doing a really good job of defending this. You can see he is up to five gates now on two bases, and Lenok just now taking his expansion. So... I really don't think that Lenok is going to be able to uh, be able to pull out of this one. I'm actually really impressed with Huck's play, considering that Lenok got in some lings right away. But that just goes to show, if you do a six pool, you're pretty much all inish, and it takes so much to pull out of it that you'll just get way behind. I mean, Huck is up to 61 supply now versus the 33 of Lenok. So, I mean, ugh, 70 versus 33, that's not the best way to go. And now look at this, Huck with lots of sentries now getting up that energy. This sentry with four kills, holy crap. He is so good at tickling people because, as we all know, sentries just tickle people to death. So he just tickles people, and they laugh and laugh, and then they can't breathe and die. I don't know if it's the best way to go, but it can't be the worst. I mean, laughing to death? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think laughing to death is a good way to die or a bad way to die. I am undecided. Um, assuming that you have to die. You have to pick away. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't want to die. This so I'd, so I'd refuse to answer the question. But uh, it looks like more Banelings being made for Lenok. Where are those being made? Right here. So it looks like as Huck pushes out across the map with a really scary army. Holy crap. Let's look at the army tab really quick. You can see, yeah, 40 supply army for Huck and only only 13 for Lenok. And he, oh, all of his Banelings go down literally to a pylon and uh some good damage being done by Lenok here and I'm going to do my best to try to look at the action here as we can see both sides are going to go into what looks to be a base trade or at least that's what Lenok wants the thing is Lenok doesn't really have that many units and look at this hug warping in a lot of zealots and zealots are going to be very very good against the speedlings as they try to pick off any kind of units they can but there's just so many units for Huck down here, you can see the expansion of Lenok going down. It is 92 supply versus 32. So I am just waiting on the GG. Really, really, really well played by Huck. I am very, very impressed as to how he managed to go ahead and hold that off. There's the GG. So Huck going to 
slap down that cheese, say, I don't want any mozzarella, serve it back to Lenok and be like, try again next time, buddy. All right, so it looks like the Foreigner Pro is going to be the victor in this case. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.